Hey fellow photographer, how's it going? I'm Michael Zelde and I'm today over here in, in our garden enjoying the uh, bright sunshine and I would like to talk to you about um, yeah, a topic. It's like why can probably other people see more detail in your photo than you can see yourself? And I, I'm not talking about any uh, spiritual stuff or voodoo, what they can see in your photos. I'm talking really about details, maybe about something in the shade where you think uh, I cover this one with shade and it's completely black, you can't see a thing, and then, then somebody else comes and says, oh, I can see all this, uh, you know, can be quite embarrassing at times. And I would like to talk to you about why is that? So out here in our garden, I've got uh, my laptop with me and uh, it's connected via Wi-Fi to the internet. And guess what I see on the screen right now? Uh, take a guess. Yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean. I don't know if you can see it on video. That is the screen and um, it's supposed to show uh, an internet browser but, but quite frankly I don't see it. And why is that? Why is that? That is because over here it's bright sunlight. It's, it's a lot of light and uh, this makes, even though I'm wearing sunglasses, it makes my iris pulling together to tiny little holes letting only in a very small fr fraction of the light. and um, that is enough to pick up all the uh, elements over here, which are brightly lit by the sunlight, but it's, it doesn't let enough light from the screen through into my eyes so that I can really read the screen. And make no mistake, the screen is good and bright. I mean, this uh, MacBook Pro, it got an excellent, a brilliant screen, but out here in the garden, in the bright sun, I can't read a thing. What I could do, however, in order to see details on my screen is I could do it like the uh, full format photographer with um, this uh, big wooden cameras pulling a blanket over my head and over the laptop like this in order to uh, to read everything and then I, could, I would be able to uh, perfectly read everything on screen. So in order to see details on the screen it is necessary to escape the bright sunlight and go into a very very dark room. Uh, this is the first thing that you have to do. The second thing that is really important to see details in your photos is that you adjust the brightness of your screen and the contrast of your screen to an optimum level, now, which really depends on, on your screen, but it should be at, at a sweet spot where it shows maximum details in the shadows and also in the highlights. And in order to make that um, simple and straightforward, I developed a little uh, calibration image which you can use to adjust your screen in a matter of seconds. Now is the time to get rid of uh, my fancy pants sunglasses because I, what I now want to do is uh, show you how uh, you can use this uh, screen calibration diagram that I prepared for you, how you can use it to calibrate your screen in a matter of seconds. Before you do anything on your screen, no matter calibration or photo retouching, what I want you to do first is to dim the lights. Now dim down all the lights in your room. Make it so that the screen is the brightest light source in the room. Now if you're sitting in front of a cool window with a nice view into the valley and it's sunshine, now it's time to let down the blinds. Now because if the room is too bright, then your eyes cannot calibrate to the screen, to the monitor, and, and you won't read what is on your screen. You don't pick up all the details which are going on there. Yeah, photography always happened or the, the development of photos always happened in, in dark rooms and it didn't change. Even with our uh, Photoshop uh, world, it didn't change. You still have to be in dark rooms in order to do good work on photos. I see the funny thing a lot when I walk into a fancy advertising agencies and they've got all their expensive screens there and doing uh, graphic stuff and photo editing stuff and everything is bright, illuminated, and sun is coming into the windows. And I always think, what a waste. They don't see what they're doing there, what they're doing there themselves. They, they can't see it. Anyway, we are smarter. We dim down the light whenever we go in front of our screen. So, um, I take it as a given that you really dim down the light. And now have a look at the diagram that I prepared. It's um, a yin-yang symbol because uh, I'm in love with Asian philosophy. I don't know if you figured that one out. Uh, or not so far. Um, 
But if you are in the Western world, don't feel bad. I do love the Western world as well. I really do. Yeah? But anyway, so now here is the uh, diagram and I put it a couple of digits into the uh, white part and the black parts and the digits have very little contrast. Yeah? And in order to make it visible, hopefully even on video, I do a little trick. I adjust the brightness and contrast of the diagram with, with a layer. So uh, let's dial up the brightness and have a look at the uh, light part. If I, uh, if I dial down the brightness, sorry, let's dial down the brightness. Now all of a sudden these um, numbers in the light part, they become visible, even though they have very little contrast. The one has got the least contrast and the two has got a little bit more contrast, the three, the four, the five got pretty strong contrast already. And you can uh, really see them if I dial down the brightness. If I do the opposite, if I dial up the brightness, uh, then all of a sudden the numbers in the dark part are coming out. Yeah, see the 6 is pretty strong, the 7, the 8, the 9 is already vanishing a bit, the 10 is already hard to see, but you can't see it. So the 10 and the 1, they are the, the numbers, you know, which really make the difference. And um, what I can do now is I can try to find a sweet spot in the brightness where I see at least most of the numbers. You know, if I can't see the 1 and the 10, then at least the 2 and the 9 or the 3 and the 8. And this is what I want you to do as well with your brightness setting. Find the sweet spot where you can see most of these numbers. And then what I can do over here is I can dial down the contrast. Bring it down, 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 down. I don't know if you can really see it on video, but now the actually the numbers are coming out even though I dialed the contrast down. Might be a little counterintuitive, but this is how it's working. If you have no problem seeing all the numbers, then uh, probably your contrast is already very low. Probably you can dial it up a little bit and still see all the numbers. If you have difficulties to see some of the numbers, probably your contrast is too high. Uh, then dial it down until you can see all. Just try it out, just takes a couple of seconds and make it so that ideally you can see even the 1 and the 10, but at least the 2 and the 9 in this diagram. This is how it's working. Yeah, no rocket science, just find out how you can adjust brightness and contrast of your screen, dial it like I explained to you, and you are set. Yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, post the download link to this uh, calibration diagram below the um, video in, in the blog post. And uh, you can freely download it over there, put it onto your screen, give it a try. Make no mistake, it's, it's not a replacement for super expensive uh, screen calibration hardware, which you can use to adjust all the colors and um, also sometimes uh, the brightness. But, you know, adjusting the contrast and the brightness, it already brings you 95% of the way. It's, it's super important, it's essential that those two parameters are set up correctly then the colors, to have the colors correct, this is another thing, but that's not so important for our eye than um, having the contrast and the brightness adjusted correctly. Yeah, our eye will forgive wrong colors. Anyway, everybody of us see, sees colors very differently. However, with the wrong contrast and the wrong brightness, you don't see details in your very own photos. Another thing which mm, might be fun, probably I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> once your screen is adjusted uh, ideally, you are the one who will see most also in other people's photos. And then you're the one who sees the very tiny details which uh, other photographers don't see themselves. Um, oh, well, don't use that. Don't, don't use that technique. It's not nice. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Thanks for watching. One more thing for today. Thank you for all the nice comments under uh, the last post. And if you, if you didn't visit uh, my last post and read through the comments, they are really worth it. I mean, especially Pedro, he posted uh, such a great photo over there and the uh, lighting diagram on how to make that photo, it's absolutely uh, worth visiting. So if you didn't see that, go back to the last post on smokingstropes.com, the post about the um, wireless flash triggers, read through the comments and um, just read through them. It's really worth it. And if you like this video or if you have uh, any questions, please post a comment underneath this video. Thanks a lot. See you next Thursday and until then I wish you good light. I wish you a lot of fun with your photo shoots. Bye bye.